it wasn't Star Wars that made them become a film executive. It was something else. If you're an Imagineer, you were a fan of something. And that passion took you to that career. Yeah. You didn't become a studio executive because you're passionate about being an executive. No. Star Wars, the theme to Star Wars, <laughs> let there be wars. Welcome to Two Gaming Dudes. Uh, Charles, I, how was your trip to Orlando? Did you oh do anything interesting? I did. I went to Disney World and I rode this ride called Rise of the Resistance. Oh my God. I rode Rise of the Resistance last summer when mm -hmm. I took the kids to summer vacation. And this, bread, this led us to the question that I posed to Charles, and we'll explore it here. How did their theme park guys hit it so perfectly, and yet the motion picture and television department shits the bed every single time? Yes. And, uh, yeah, I want to talk about everything this ride does right, because it's everything the movies does wrong. There we go. All right. First off, scale. <laughs> yes. Okay. Everything about this ride is huge and humongous. It starts off small and everything's small scale. Everything is very confined. And you're like, okay, uh, I, I thought I knew what to expect. You have no idea what to expect because when those doors open and everything is just humongous. Yeah, it starts small, uh, but it doesn't grow like this linearly. No. It starts small, small, and then it goes like this. Yes. And it just gives you that sense of being blown away. And you're just like, blown wow. Away. That's exactly the word for it, yes. Okay, which made me feel something I haven't felt in a really long time with Star Wars. It made me feel like a kid again. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I am enjoying the hell out of Star Wars again. It was exciting and interesting and fun. Yes. Like A New Hope. Exciting and interesting and fun. Yeah. The first time you saw a Star Destroyer come by and it picks up the Corvette, you're like, that thing is monstrous. This thing is huge. And again, it was all about scale and perspective and everything about it was huge. Darth Vader comes in and he's like 10 feet tall. He's Everything is scaled like that to feel larger than life. I think that is one sliver of the, the bigger picture. The, yeah. the bigger picture is they took their time with this thought through every detail, every minuscule detail, every little piece of tchotchke on the walls is thought through. There, nothing was left to chance with this theme park attraction. Yes. Everything, from the minute you get in line, it's been choreographed and meticulously done. So well done. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's you... the exact opposite of how they write movie scripts now. <laughs> The story is, the is simple. Truth. It's a yeah. simple story. You're this innocent person. You're on a spaceship. You're being attacked by the First Order. You're captured. You have to escape. That's the story. It's simple. fucking captivating. It's so simple. And so were the original movies. <laughs> they were so simple. These are good guys. These are bad guys. They need to rescue her from the bad guys. Off you go. All right. Brilliant. I understand that. I catch that concept. I'm good. The taxation of trade routes to the Trade Federation. Oh, is oh. oh no. Stop. It's the is greatest that... theme park attraction I've ever been on. Hands Nothing down. else even comes close so the other thing that I think this captures that the movies don't anymore is the spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know how to really grasp and describe how that works. Every moment of this ride is just a feast for all of your senses. You know, yeah. your eyes are just like captivated. The sound, everything happening is amazing. You don't get that in these new Star Wars movies anymore. It just... No, you it, get... It just, feels flat and you take the dagger like this and you line it up and it lines up to the throne room and then you get the glowy thing and then, you're and like, then you use the glowy thing to get another glowy thing and, and then, then the karate fight and then he goes guys i think i have a match <laughs> the rock the, the ice restaurant and the lighthouse all fit the doubloon not that one that one's willie's <laughs> i uh, Thought and patience. 
Yes. That's uh, that's all I can come up with. Some forethought okay. went into it, and they took the time to do it right. I'm going to blow your mind for this. Ready? The amount of money spent on this ride to make it yeah. is the same amount of money spent to make one of those movies. Really? Really? Yeah, I can believe this, it. This Everything cost, is film quality. This cost about $250 million to create this attraction. That's how much it cost to make one of those damn sequel movies. <laughs> Shit, man. Uh, you, you also rode the Smuggler's Run? I did. So I you, did ride the Smuggler's Run. That was a you get lot of to, fun. You get yeah. to ride around in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, and that was great. Fly it. it. A lot of fun. Also, well done. Um, uh, different. Star, Star Tours. Star I did Tours, Star Tours as original. well, which has been around for a very long time. But despite its age, it's still just a lot of fun. I rode the I got, original Star Tours uh, in Orlando when I was like 12 years old, when it was brand new. And even then, wow. it, it blew me away. Yeah. And even now, last year, it was still really, really fun. I agree. That was actually the first time I'd ever been on it. It was just this year. And uh, it was a lot more intense than I was expecting. Like, I thought, okay, this is an yeah. older ride. I even warned my wife as we were getting in. I was like, just say, so you no, know, this is an older ride. So it's probably not going to be. I was wrong. It's awesome. So it shows that there is still an awful lot of talent out there. I mean, the Disney Imagineers... Everybody knows their reputation. The stuff they come up with is, it defies belief sometimes. It does. It right? does. The Haunted Mansion. Decades old technology. You get on it every time you're seeing something new. You're discovering something new. It never gets stale. It's always fun. We yeah. rode it five times last summer while we were there. I did Rise of Resistance twice. It was... The, the, the it was Imagineers so are so goddamn good at what they do. Why is there so little bleed over... To the other divisions of Disney is, or Lucas. Is this because when developing the ride, the executives are like very hands off? They're like, I don't understand what you're doing here, but that that or... doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like Disney execs. Yeah. Bob Iger, you know, the CEO, he blamed the failure of Miss Marvel uh, not Miss the Marvels. Mm -hmm. He blamed the failure of that, that the production was during COVID which means there weren't as many executives around to make sure that the ship was being steered correctly. <laughs> Your suggestion was that you needed more executive interference with the creative team? Wow. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that's why. I don't think the executives stood by. Something else happened. I don't Something know. Something else is I, going on. I don't know what it is. Is it just attracting different types of people? To the, I don't you know. know. The decision makers for the theme park are a, a cut from a different cloth. Than the decision makers for motion pictures? Maybe. I don't know what the I answer is, but it is a completely different different yeah, group it, with it, completely it different outcomes. Completely. Um Yeah, I got nothing. I can't <laughs> I can't explain it. All I can tell you is I go and watch these new Star Wars movies and I'm either bored or I'm irritated or yeah. it's just so cringy or dumb. And I get frustrated because it's Star Wars and I want it to feel amazing and special and cool. Yeah. And it doesn't. And then I wrote this. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. This is what I was wanting. This is everything that I wanted from Star Wars happening right here. How did you get it so perfectly right here? I don't know. You mess it up everywhere else. I don't know. It, it, it's so perfect. that I'll, I'll give you this anecdote. When we went on it, we, um, we used the Fast Pass, which you, you can download an app. And you can make your reservation for later in the day for something with a really long wait. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent us through as a group of five or six, however many there were. And the guy next to me was a guy just like us. Same age, same demographic. Clearly sure. grew up like us, uh, but he was from Mexico City. Okay. But clearly a Star Wars geek since he was a kid, like us. He, he didn't have Fast Pass. He waited in line six hours. Wow. And we were sitting each other in the, in the hangar bay. Looking at him, looking at each other, both stunned. And he says, this was totally worth six hours. And he's right. He, he is. He's right. If all you got to ride in that day at, at Disney Studios was just this, was just, it's, it's, it was worth your trip. Absolutely. It was worth your trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the flight, the hotel, everything involved to just ride this. And the ride's only like four minutes long, but it's. It, I think it's longer than that. No, no, no. It's only about four, four minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I... I mean, I, there's a lot of build-up to it. I, I so enjoyed the theatrics of the queue. Yeah. I, I like that they did that, which was originally done with Star Tours. Yep. Um, and I'm glad that's caught on and become a thing now. 
Me too, because that means you get to stand in line while indoors and in air conditioning. And I'm I'm all for that. And in this immersive environment. Yeah. Which had just as much attention to detail as the ride itself. Yes. So, so, so there you go. Nothing but praise. I, I, I've been looking for something positive to say about Star Wars. I'm so glad you Me got to too. experience this. Yeah. You know what? I think that is a big part of it right now yeah. is I really did want something positive to say about Star Wars. And we haven't for so long because we've had the Book of Boba Fett and we've had so good. So it's really cool to be able to say, this is Star Wars. It is freaking awesome. And it's refreshing and hopeful because, okay, the property is not dead. You no. can still do good stuff with this, mm -hmm. with the right people and the right attitude. Yeah. You can still do amazing things with Star Wars. And man, I hope they do someday. <sighs> I'd love to see I, a good I, film. I don't think they're going to do it with the new Ray movie, but, you know, maybe... Something somewhere will happen. I don't know. But already, that already may not happen. That's true. Charmaine <laughs> caught so much shit <laughs> that they were like, pull the plug. And then they got so much shit for pulling the plug that they were like, oh, yeah, it's back on. <laughs> I, I got nothing. But have you ridden this ride? Because if you have, comment down below. I want to know what you thought of this, especially compared to some of the other attractions and things that are at Disney World and Universal Studios. Yeah. You know, What did you think of this ride? Because I was blown away there is no nothing else compares to it i mean i would say the closest thing is the haunted mansion okay um because it's got that same thing you're immersed in this world even before you even make your way to the the coach i thought the harry potter ride no. at, at universal was very similar i mean you had to wear glasses or the no. 3d glasses because everything was in 3d which was cool i mean the ride was still a lot of fun it was very cool so i like the harry potter and i like the transformers those were great See, but that, it was not like this. And that's the most amazing thing about this. You mentioned scale and the 3D glass. There's no trickery like that. You, we got into that hangar bay, and I, we stayed. Everybody was getting mad. Two, <laughs> Dad, the ride is this way. Two other just groups. Like, Stop. Yeah. I need to see this. Two other groups passed by, like, passed us. And I, I just sat there staring because I'm like, how the hell did they do this? How did they make it look like we're standing in a hangar bay of a, a Star Destroyer? And I, I went... All right, I looked at every corner. They just built a hangar. <laughs> That's what they it didn't is. try to trick you. <laughs> They're like, how big does it have to be? I don't know, 100 feet tall? Build okay. it. Build a 100 foot tall screen then. Let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just amazing. When it's in 3D glasses and you know you're looking at a green screen beyond the glasses, it's a different feel. It, it is very different. Yeah. This is real. You're standing. Smugglers. That's a Millennium Falcon right there to scale. And to detail, you're standing right underneath it, looking up. Yeah, yeah. Very different. So when you're those are here, fucking ATATs. Yeah, and they were to scale. Just huge. <laughs> I mean, holy to look shit. up at them, and uh, I think it might be half scale actually, but still, still, it's enormous. Just the size of it is, is incredible. Yeah, that's so well done. So well done. I think there needs to be a shakeup. Whoever the decision makers were here, mm -hmm. they need that kind of talent over on the TV. Just people who understand, you know what really makes people excited? This. Yeah. Put this in the movie. Oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Oh, I know what it is. I don't know. <laughs> I suspect. We don't know a goddamn thing, but. Imagineers grew up as fans. Hmm. I think if you're an Imagineer, you saw something on Star Trek that made you say, man, those fucking pads are sweet. God, I wish we had one of those for real. And they go to MIT and they learn computer engineering and they develop the iPad. Oh, okay. You, you understand okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The guys on the film side, I love movies or they've just got an ego and they think they know better. <laughs> they weren't fans. It wasn't Star Wars that made them become a film executive. It was something else. If you're an Imagineer, you were a fan of something and that passion took you to that career. Yeah. You didn't become a studio executive because you're passionate about being an executive. No, you did that because money. That's, I think, I think that's the difference. I don't know it, but I suspect it. I don't know. It. That's an interesting theory, though. And it's really fucking sad if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, share, and uh, you gotta let us know what you think. See, si, senor. We'll see you in another video. Later. Later.